Hello and welcome to Social Church. We're really excited to be recording the testimony of Chris Kandaya today. Chris is the founding director of Home for Good. He's a prolific author and is a regular contributor to many news channels, including the BBC. I'm really looking forward to hearing this. Over to you, Chris. Hi, my name's Chris Kandaya and this is my testimony. I was brought up in a mixed race, mixed faith family. So my mum uh, was born in India, my dad was born in Malaysia, my dad's dad was born in Sri Lanka, and my mum's dad was born in Ireland. So I've always grown up slightly confused about my identity, where I'm from, which nations cheer for in the Olympics or the World Cup. And so I was quite confused about what my faith ought to be as well. My name is Krish, which is short for Krishna. And Krishna, as some of you might know, uh, is the name of a Hindu god. Uh, But that was really the only religious direction that my family um, gave me. Uh, They allowed me to choose my own faith at a time that they thought was appropriate. And so when I was about 15 years old, I was in an all-boys comprehensive school in Brighton. And it was in the chemistry lab, which was our form room. Uh, And it was a dangerous place because kids were a, a little bit chaotic back then. My teacher used to nip out and have a quick smoke, leaving uh, teenage boys in charge of a chemistry lab, which is not always the best thing. But it was in that context that a lad stood up one day and said that he'd become a friend of God. But the night before, he'd been at a meeting and he'd realised that he needed a relationship with God, that he wanted to become a Christian. And so here he was, a brand new Christian, and he thought it was the best thing that had happened in his life. And he wanted all of us to know about it too. And that was probably the bravest thing I'd ever seen in my life, live. Here was someone uh, putting it out there, letting the world know what he believed, and he wasn't kind of concerned about the consequences. Ours was a rough school, so he could have got himself into a lot of trouble, but he really earned my respect. So I went to see him, and I said, look, I'm a secret Christian. I've been going to church a little bit, but uh, I thought this was something that you kept private between you and God. And he said something like, Chris, if you knew the God that I met last night, you wouldn't be able to be quiet about it. And that really challenged me, that here was someone who had not just religion, but a relationship with God that was passionate about it, that realized that Jesus was alive and real to him. And he had something that I didn't have. He he had this vibrancy of faith. And through him and some uh, schools workers that were doing uh, stuff at my school and a local church, I came to the point where I wanted to become a follower of Jesus. I wanted Jesus to be the master of my life. I wanted to begin to emulate uh, the way that he lived. Uh, I wanted to accept what he'd done on the cross to count for me that I could be forgiven and uh, adopted into God's family. And that was really the beginning of the journey for me. And it was an exciting one because uh, if this thing was true, it wasn't just true for me, it was true for everybody. And so my mate and I, Steve, we tried to help our friends at school uh, kind of investigate the claims of Christianity. And that was really positive, actually. We, we ended up some massive discussions, trying to wrestle with some of the big questions. You know, hasn't science disproved God? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? What about all the other faiths? Is the Bible reliable? We had to wrestle with those questions. And to be honest, trying to explain faith to teenage boys at my school really solidified my faith. The more I tested it, questioned it, and exposed it to critique, uh, the more real and true and um, plausible I found it. So it was a real virtuous circle to that. And since that moment when I was 15, my life's been a journey full of ups and downs, full of failures and successes, but the kind of constant direction has been to try to pursue Jesus. And sometimes that has led to some wonderful things, some uh, incredible opportunities to kind of meet people and to uh, do things I never thought I'd I'd get to do. Uh, Sometimes it's led to some really tough stuff. Sometimes it's led us into some quite dangerous circumstances. I ended up uh, getting married and my wife and I were uh, cross-cultural missionaries in Albania during a really turbulent time in that country's history. And we were only there because we were following God, but it it led to some pretty difficult, dangerous circumstances. And so I guess for anyone listening to this, I want to tell you that following Jesus is the most exciting, challenging, uh, wonderful thing you can do. Um, But Christians are always told that when we explain 
the good news of Jesus. We need to explain what Jesus did on the cross and why it counts for us. The resurrection of Jesus is the demonstration that Jesus' sacrifice was accepted by God, but we're also supposed to talk about the cost of discipleship, that there is challenge to this, that becoming a Christian is um, not just a bolt-on extra to bits of your life, but actually it transforms everything about your life. It's like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. It's a radical transformation of all that we are, a dream, hope to be. And so it's great that you're listening, and uh, I hope my little story will help you come to the point where you feel you might be able to become a follower of Jesus. And to do that, it's really quite simple. Uh, we need to recognize that uh, God is God, that he is the master and ruler of the universe, that his ways are the right ways. And, and no matter how well we've lived, all of us in some way or another have kind of fallen short of God's standards uh, by what we've thought or done or failed to do. And the wonderful thing about the Christian message is, is if you recognize that you've fallen short of God's standards um, and you're willing to ask him for his forgiveness, uh, God says that he'll accept the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross to count for you. And what Jesus did by laying down his life, by living the life that you and I should have lived, the life of compassion and grace and mercy and kindness towards others, that's, that's how Jesus lived. And yet he was killed and crucified uh, as someone who uh, was willing to take the punishment that we deserve for our sin upon himself. And so if you're willing to recognize that you've fallen short of God's standards and willing to accept what Jesus did on the cross counts for you, then God does something amazing. He forgives you. He sends his Holy Spirit to come and live inside you and transform you. And uh, he makes you part of his family. The Bible calls that adoption. God adopts you as his son or daughter. And he gives you a whole new family uh, on earth called the church. And uh, God's Holy Spirit begins to come into our lives and change us and help us become the people that God designed us to be, people full of grace and compassion and kindness and mercy to others, people that are willing to seek first God's purposes in the world, uh, whether that's in our personal lives or our public lives, our professional lives, our family life. We want to seek God's kingdom, God's rule in all that we do. And it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, way to live, full of challenge, but full of excitement, and uh, that life starts now here on earth uh, as we seek to honor and serve God, but it carries on forever in the new heavens and the new earth. Uh, and so we look beyond death to the time of being face to face with God in eternity, which is a wonderful hope uh, that God gives us all. So I hope my story helps you, and uh, if I can be of any help to you, please feel free to search me out on social media and I'd love to talk more. Thanks so much for listening. Praise God for these testimonies. Thank you so much. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. We release new testimonies every single week alongside Q&As, expository preaching and acoustic worship sessions. Thanks a lot for listening and see you soon. Bye.